the news that this OPEC production cut is terrific for oil producers. What about the refiners? Typically, a spike in the price of crude hurts the refiners, at least short term, because refining is a margins game. It's all about the difference between the price of oil and the price of gasoline. But there was one company in this group that actually saw its stock rally today, and that is Marathon Petroleum, MPC, the third largest refiner in America. Also owns Speedway. You probably filled up there because it's the nation's second largest convenience store chain, 2,770 locations across 22 states. Been an eventful time for Marathon Pete. At the end of October, they reported some weaker than expected numbers, but management also announced they were dropping down some of their pipeline assets to MPLX. That's the company's master limited partnership subsidiary and even contemplating the sale of MPLX altogether. Then last week, we learned that Elliott Management, activist hedge fund, had taken a 4% stake in Marathon Petroleum. They proposed several more steps to unlock value, which they said could send the stock up to 60 80%. In response, the stock spiked nearly 9% that same day, 43 up to 47%. I think it's this activist involvement and the possibility the company could potentially take a number of steps to unlock value, something they've always been amenable to, that allowed the stock to hang in there today while the other big refiners were hit on the chin. So let's take a closer look with Gary Hemminger. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Marathon Pete. Get a better sense of what's happening and where his company is headed. Mr. Hemminger, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for having me, Jim. Oh, absolutely. I've got to tell you, Greg, you. Obviously, but one of the things that is funny about these activists, they tend to pick on the good ones because they know that, therefore, they're going to win either way. You have done more to bring out value than anyone in your, in your class. And this split, the original split, uh, also brought out a lot of value, created double the value. Does, do you need to do anything more than the steps that you have said that you'll do? Well, Jim, in fact, uh, you recall I've been on your show right after we split from Marathon mm -hmm. Oil. And then when we, in October of 2012, when we did the uh, uh, IPO for right. MPLX, and then again when we acquired the Hess stores. So we've we've done a lot to be able to to grow value. Every time the stock has gone higher. Every time you've it has. Made a, you've made our viewers a lot of money. In fact, I take you back to two, since 2011, splitting from Marathon, we're up 140 percent in total shareholder return. Extraordinary. And that much better. Everyone needs to know much better than anyone else in your in your in your segment. Well, thank you. And and what this reflects is that our board has a, a very deep knowledge of how to grow value, and mm -hmm. and we review a lot of opportunities with the board. And all of these opportunities that we continue to review, you know, it's, it's evident. And I agree with Elliot. And I agree with, I, I visit with many shareholders uh, all the time right. that there's a tremendous value. And we ca caught up in the downturn of the commodity price right. in the second half of last year that hurt refiners. And then we had just purchased MPL, or MPLX, just purchased Mark West. Right. And we got caught up in the downturn of the, the drill bit. So they're very involved in the gathering and processing and out at the production regions. So, but we've seen the cost of capital and we've seen the yield improve right. over the summer. And I think we're in a good place right now. Yeah, we were always, you know, as you know, huge fans of yours and of Mark West. So it's a great combination. How about this deal today? Does this deal stick? Because, you know, we've all been so suspicious. Well, um, and, and in fact, back early this year, <laughs> we talked about this. And uh, I was on a panel at, at a conference and we talked about where oil prices would be. And, right. And I stated at that time that oil prices really needed to get into the 50 to $55 range for a number of reasons. I travel to the Middle East often. And, and you just look at the economies and you look at the requirements there. Right. And you look at the requirements here domestically, what the producer, the driller, you look at all the drillers today and the service companies are up significantly yes. because it, it's a good uh, position that they're going to get back in and back to work. So, does it stick? You know, it's, it's down, you know, probably about 1.2 is where they're going to, right. uh, 1.2 million barrel reduction is where they're going to land, uh, is where they need it to right. be. We believe uh, by the end of the first half that the global supply of crude can be in balance and might even be a little bit of a supply deficit as we go into the second half of the year. So I believe it has a chance to stick as long as they, you know, the, the technical right. uh, agreements that are going to be put together here over the ne next couple of weeks really come into where they stated they would be. Well, today. your sister company, MRO, is acting like it is. It's up 20 percent today. Right, they are. Which I know you've always been, you know, you've always been clear. These are separate companies, but they, everybody benefits if they both go up. They do. I'm still a big shareholder of Marathon Oil. Okay, now, uh, new president. Yes. Uh, to say that he's pro-fossil fuel is being an understatement. Right. Uh, what does it mean for a refiner to have a president that really, very specifically, is pro-oil and gas? Well, I think, first of all, the pipeline permits and the, the issues that we've had across the country with the Keystone Pipeline, now the Dakota Access Pipeline, which we are projected to be an owner in the Dakota right. Access Pipeline, and, you know, it's stymied right now to, to finish the construction. You know, I'm very confident, you know, the president-elect is 
is, is very intelligent. He's put himself, uh, surrounding himself with very intelligent people that understand the economics of the oil and gas industry. So I'm confident we're going to get the permits going. The second thing that uh, really needs to be handled with, with the new administration is this renewable fuel standard. It just does oh, the not RIN. work. Huh. The, the RIN, you know, RINs are now trading almost at a dollar. Yeah, this um, is just a weirdo subsidy that didn't work, right? It, it's, a, it's really a hidden tax right. to the consumer. And it doesn't work, and it's been very detrimental to all of the refiners. And there, there's really nobody uh, who's, who's making any money off of RINs, but the consumer right. is paying this very high cost. Absolutely. Now, uh, when I look at Speedway, I have to admit, it does seem undervalued. Um, but th there's not much you can do. I mean, you want to have both sides, right? Well, Jim, as I talked with you uh, right after us acquiring the Hess stores, and we've done a great job of executing and bringing those in. We're way ahead of schedule yeah. on capturing the synergies. But it, Speedway is very important to the integration of MPC, the integration back to the refinery, integration into the MLP. If you really think about we sell 6 billion gallons a year through Speedway, for the most part, all that volume has gone through all of our pipelines, our terminals, our docks, our barges, that are all in the MLP. So it's very supportive of the MLP, and it's, and it's very important that we control that enterprise. But I agree with you, we're not getting the full value in our share price, right. but uh, I also believe that we have some alternatives that we continue to work on that is going to continue to increase that price. All right, one last question just about the general ethos. We do have under Obama, it's almost as if I feel like that the protests against pipelines uh, let's just say that maybe the president actually favored them. Maybe the protests are something that an uh, anti-fossil fuel guy w would uh, certainly almost think is good okay, or, or say is good. Uh, what can Trump do about a local protest? I mean, if, if the end, the president is pro-pipeline, uh, how does that stop a Dakota uh, protest? Well, the, the president was... Uh and I, and I believe the Obama administration was pro-pipeline. Yes, they knew uh, the pipelines were safer they, than other forms. They, they certainly know that. Um, you know, the Keystone was, was one political view. Uh, the Code Access Pipeline, really, this, this really came to a head right before the election. Right. So what has happened is they really punted this to the next administration. Right. Um, but I believe, you know, the Army Corps had approved right. the, uh, the permit, had approved the easements. Um, we are a company. I had this question in a town hall meeting. We're a company. We certainly do not want to do, will not do anything that is environmentally unfriendly, nor will we do anything to uh, you know, violate uh, secret burial grounds. So, right. nor will ETP or Phillips, who are parties to this pipeline either. So, I believe, I, I have very high confidence this is going to get resolved and get resolved early in the new administration. Excellent. Let's leave it at that. That's Gary Hemminger, the chairman, president, and CEO of Marathon Petroleum Corp., MPC by far the most undervalued in the entire group and the one that I recommend constantly. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.